Here we are everybody, welcome back to another video and we are back for more F1 23 and it is time to start the road to glory journey and we are here to start it with Alfa Romeo. Can we get a championship for Alfa Romeo in their final year of Formula 1 unless they decide to go to Haas or something like that. I heard rumors about that but like that was like two months ago. But it is the final year for Alfa Romeo at least in this year's game. Could they come back in the future? I don't know. But it is time to take Alfa Romeo to the top in Formula 1. And it is going to be a challenge. Alfa Romeo will probably have one of the worst cars on the grid. They're not the worst worst though. And the performance index as you'll see later into this uh, video when we go to team selection. But we're going to take Alfa Romeo to the top. And we're going to take them to championship glory. Don't know if we'll win the constructors though. That will be a different challenge that's for sure. But... We will figure it out. So, if you did not check out the last video goals, please check that out about what happened to my team. But we're not going to talk about my team at the moment. We're here to jump in for Alfa Romeo Road to Glory Series, which I've been wanting to do for a long time. Um, last year's game, I did one with Alfa. Last year's game, I actually did one with, uh, not Alfa Romeo, with Haas. Uh, I never actually recorded it, though. Uh, I just did that mainly in my spare time. So, now we're going to do this in F123. And it's going to be a lot of fun because who doesn't love to take, who doesn't love driving a back marker and taking it to the top? And I don't know how the car will perform. I expect it to be a boat. Um, I expect there to be, uh, I expect there to be a lot of difficult, difficulties. As you can tell, we're going through the sink right now. Everything will be default on resources. Um, we're not going to really change with the resources. We might change that for next season, but I don't know. But here we are on the performance index or team selection and Alfa Romeo actually the third worst car in the grid and they're not far off from Williams though they're really not that far off um, but we're ahead of the likes of McLaren and Alfa Tari. Alfa Tari have the worst car in the grid and to be fair I really don't want to do an Alfa Tari Road to Glory because I feel like there's no point of having Alfa Tari challenge Red Bull when they're supposed to be the sister team they're supposed to be ass. <laughs> I'm just playing. But Alfa Romeo, it's probably one of my favorite Formula 1 teams. It's just my one of my favorite car manufacturers as well. So, yeah. Why not? Shall we? So here we are. And it's time to meet basically everyone in the team. Got our team principal. I, I'm not going to even try to pronounce or say that name because I feel like I'm going to get it wrong. But we've actually gone with our team with our teammate we're gonna have Valtteri Bottas um he's actually a very it's just kind of weird he's actually very highly rated um which I feel like is quite a little bit which I feel like is quite a joke um uh, because he really hasn't been good this season but whatever I mean he's good in the F1 game so I'll take that no offense to Guan Yu, I just don't again I mean he got Valtteri he's got so much experience within the team it's just again we just we just gotta sign up with Valtteri if you all know if you all know what I mean. But it's time to do some upgrades. Um, Bahrain first race. Uh, doing the whole calendar uh, as we said. Bahrain uh, more of a more of an engine kind of track, but or more engine power. But we have again the Ferrari engine is probably the best engine in the game, except the durability is kind of a little bit booty. But I think we're going to do some front downforce onto the car. Uh, we have probably one of the worst cars when it comes to downforce. And again, I feel like this car might be a struggle with front end. Um, I feel like we're going to probably struggle in front end, to be honest. Um, and I can't really drive a car without a good front end. So we'll do some front downforce. And we also might do some weight reduction. We'll have two upgrades actually come on for the Bahrain Grand Prix. There's no point in rushing the upgrades. Uh, they'll come in time just for Bahrain so we will possibly have two upgrades coming onto the car um, I think we will probably do the weight reduction the engine power there's really no point doing the engine we can kind of wait until the next event to do the engine upgrades the ball but it is time to see if the upgrades come on for the Bahrain GP and yes they do we both get the front downforce and weight reduction upgrades onto the car just in time for Bahrain but we also got a little bit more upgrades coming out but as you can see in the performance index we are now third and McLaren have actually jumped us and we're ahead of Haas and Alfatari but yeah. Hello and welcome back finally 
to the hustle and bustle of Formula One. The F1 2023 World Championship is about to get underway. We cannot wait to get started. Last season saw the biggest raft of regulation changes in years, and we're excited to see more of that wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing. The big question is, though, can anyone challenge the dominance of Max Verstappen and Red Bull? Well, all the teams have been working so hard to get ahead in the development race, looking not only at their own car, but those of their competitors. Thousands of engineers working hard back at the factory. We come to the racetrack and we focus on the 20 drivers at the pinnacle of motorsport. But it's important to remember this is very much a team game. And watching that technical battle unfold throughout the year will be fascinating as everyone looks to get to grips with these new regulations. Meanwhile, the F1 World Tour features all the classic highlights. Monaco, Silverstone, Singapore. Great to see all those iconic tracks back, but also a few surprises. Qatar is back after a year away and the inaugural Las Vegas Grand Prix. The glitz and glamour of Vegas flat out down the world famous strip. I know all the drivers have been so excited about this one ever since it was announced. Okay, that is enough from me. Let's get cracking with the action. Well, there we go. A little bit of a hype video from Natalie Pinkham. Um, basically, just talking about the F1 season, and uh, we're going to roll right into Bahrain. Uh, I'm not going to waste any much of, much of y'all time. Um, kind of the cool thing, though, is that, I mean, the video was kind of where I wanted it to be. I didn't want the video to be about an hour long. So, okay, thankfully, we don't have to do all the things like we did in my team, everything like that. We had to do setups and everything like that. It is not how it is, but as well but here we are for uh, FP1 free practice one and it's actually good to do some practice running um, just to get used to the car and the car is actually not that great it's it, it's uh, I don't know what it's just the weight reduction it's just it's just heavy I mean it just feels like a it's just a boat <laughs> it, it is just a boat um, the front end isn't bad. Um, I, I, I like a car that has a good front end. I cannot deal with a car that has a weak rear end. And unfortunately, Alfa Romeo does have a decent rear end. But again, I mean, it's just mainly set up as well. Because again, if I just get the balance right, then I can perform the car to where it can, where it can be. But uh, so far, FP1 is done and we actually finished P9. We did a qualifying lap. Qualifying pace isn't bad. But again, this is practice after all. We're almost 1.4 seconds off the pace. Um, Valtteri P17, he did a, lo a lot of long run running, so that's not really much to worry about Valtteri. Plus his practice, it, practice times don't really matter. Different programs, that's what settled the time. So Valtteri on the hard tire run, on the hard tires. I don't know how the tire wear is going to be in this car. I expect it to be pretty bad. I think we have one of the worst cars on the grid when it comes to tires. I think the Alfa Romeo, though, might be the second worst. I think the Haas is probably the worst when it comes to tire wear. Because if you watch the real life Formula 1 season... Oh, Haas have, oh, they got a boat. <laughs> they got a boat. I mean, they're good in one lap pace, but their race pace is, woo. And honestly, again, I mean, in the future, we could have waited till like the real team performance came, came out, but I just wanted to jump into this now because again, my team's corrupted. So everything is kind of going to differ, but that's enough for practice three. That's enough for the whole weekend. The car's all right. Got a little bit better with it, but it is time to drive mad and do some qualifying laps around Bahrain. So let's get ready for qualifying for the Bahrain Grand Prix. Oh, here we are, ready for qualifying around Bahrain, and um, as y'all know, said it before, qualifying pace isn't really my strength, it's more the race pace where I'm at, but again, uh, it is kind of good to see where the car is in qualifying, uh, just see where the trim is, and basically just seeing how the car is when it comes to one lap pace. Um, the race pace, though, isn't really bad in this car when I did long runs, it's just the more matter of fact is that these tires do fall off a lot, but qualifying... We're just got to see what we can do. Honestly, race one is all just, again, it's just learning the car, basically. I want to take race one as slow as I can, and I want to learn the car so then I know what's going to go on through Jetta. And Jetta is basically the time where hopefully I can get ready. But we have a uh, we have the same setup on as we did in uh, the original Bahrain track. Uh, we did try a new, another setup. 
it wasn't it wasn't too good. It was not very good. Um, I was losing a lot of time and I wasn't really happy. This setup, I'm more balanced with it, but again, I would like eventually to have a new setup around barring because this setup isn't. It's good, but it's not. It's not what I want it to be sometimes. But first lap, it's P9. And then we get absolutely swarmed by uh, basically everyone else. Oscar Piastri, Albon, and Valtteri actually put in an ama amazing lap. He's actually ahead of us by about three or three, three to two tenths. So Valtteri put in a great lap. But we said P14 though, which is kind of where I expected the car to be. Um, I honestly thought we could have probably been P15, but Valtteri put in an amazing lap. Valtteri is known for that one lap pace in that car. So again, that's his strength. It's just, I mean, again, I mean, it's just mainly to see on how the car will perform later into the session but here we are the final laps q1 we are near the drop-off zone and we're having an absolutely horrendous of a lap and this is gonna probably put us out here of q2 if we do not get our act together or q1 and my apologies but uh first first couple of corners we lost a little bit of time we we kind of did a couple of things we changed the toe just a little bit uh we lowered the ride height maybe just about about two clicks down on each um also put on some more front downforce a little bit just to basically get the car a little bit more stable uh, I didn't really have enough front end kind of on the opening lap which is kind of unfortunate but again we are actually sitting out in P16 I don't think we're going to improve in this session I think we might be out of this session Valtteri though he's sitting comfortably P14 I don't know where Valtteri will come across the line but we're going to be out of Q1 here because we can't find anything and we're out in Q1 already that's a Q1 knockout already in the first race of the season for Alfa Romeo and that is, that's not great. Um, that's a, ooh, that's a hard pill to swallow. Um, yeah. What is there to say? Um, was it was a messy lap overall. Valtteri though gets into Q2 though with an amazing lap. He's up to P10. So Valtteri's experience coming into play, but already on race one, we're out in Q1. Almost seven tenths loss to Valtteri. That is insane. Oh, let's get on to the race, shall we? Months of rumor and speculation all come to an end today as we return to racing for the opening event of what promises to be an enthralling season. Welcome along then to round one of this year's Formula One World Championship. There's no shortage of passing opportunities around the 3.36 miles of the Bahrain International Circuit, with the best, of course, at turn one, and then another soon after into turn four. 15 corners here, six to the left and nine to the right, and we could see one or two flat spots into that tight left-hander of turn 10. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position, and Max Verstappen lines up alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Perez, Sainz, Hamilton, Russell, Fernando Alonso, Norris, Ocon, Stroll, Gasly, Bottas, Albon, Hulkenberg, Oscar Piastri, Magnussen, Cowboy, Sonoda, Sargent and Nick De Vries. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? A new season, then a clean slate where anything could happen. Anthony Davidson is with me today as once again we get another year of Formula One underway. We're into those tense few minutes before the first race then. Everyone's a little bit nervous about reliability. They haven't been running in the hot, turbulent wake of other cars in practice. And they've not been pushing at 100% for long durations. Let's hope no one has to deal with any nasty surprises. Okay, here we go. I know what you can do. Don't let me down. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate your uh, your motivation. As We are motivated, though. We're P17 on the grid. It uh, wasn't a great qualifying, but again, the race pace is basically my strength. So we will hopefully learn the car as much as we can as we go on through the race as well. But... Uh, just looking at the strategy changes a little bit. We might go over the preferred strategy, which is the medium to the hard. Um, I tried a little bit to see what we can do on the softs, but the softs are going to fall off like a rocket ship, so uh, there's no point. And the tire wear isn't really that bad. But looking at the strategies up the grid, uh, both Williams boys are on the are on the soft tires, so that's a that's a plus for them. But everyone else though is kind of on the mediums. No one really has went on for the hard tire, which I mean the hard tire could have been an option, but 
Again, I feel like it's just safe to say to run to the mediums, because that is mainly the ideal strategy. But um, race one at Bahrain, it's going to be a learning curve for everyone. Um, basically for me, and uh, basically for me though, because I'm getting used to a uh, different type of car. It definitely feels a lot different to driving a my team car. That is for sure. The my team car felt a lot more stable than this car. This car is a oh, this car is quite a boat, but. Anything could change around Bahrain. We got 29 laps around this around this place. The five red lights are coming on, and we're now underway for race one in Bahrain. And it is lights out, and away we go for the Bahrain Grand Prix. We get a decent start ahead. Piastri got a horrible start, same as everyone else behind. Bottas also got a horrible start, and we've already jumped half the grid. Well, not half the grid. We jumped like four drivers there, and we're up to P13 now, P12, P11 possibly now as we go down the inside of Alex Albon on the soft tires, or he's on the soft. We're on the mediums, and we're going to give Albon just some space around the outside. And we're going to fight this back all the way up into up the hill, all the way up down to turn number three. Albon's got a lot more straight line speed. That Williams pretty quick. We go down the inside on on Alex Albon. We're going to give just enough space on the exit, and we're going to get ahead. And what a start. Already up to P11 on the opening lap. That is what I call a success. But we run out wide just a little bit. Got to the marbles a little bit already on the opening lap. And basically the marbles are not what you want to do because that basically just ruins your race and I feel like the marbles could have been from the support races maybe a little bit or they're just again maybe it's just the tire effect but I don't know the marbles do build up eventually and you really feel when you get in those marbles it is not fun whatsoever but we're going to keep for continue on we're not going to push too much though because again there's really no point in pushing a little bit we're going to just kind of run our own pace we're going to probably push the opening lap so just see if we could stay with all come maybe a little bit we get a oh my god what a huge snap out of that corner uh yeah, this setup is a bit, it's a bit tricky now because the rear end is kind of, the rear tires fall off a lot compared to the fronts, and the car does not feel great when it comes to uh, the rear end tires falling off super quick, but Albon's got in the slipstream, he's probably dumping a little bit of overtake, he's got a good car in the straight line, he thought about a move, but cannot get that move done, and we have to defend maybe a little bit from him, but already lost a second from Ocon and Norris, uh, Norris is absolutely flying, and that being an absolute dog of a car, he's flying off the grid. Oscar Piastri got a horrible start. He's actually down in last place. Um, that is a nightmare for Oscar, but again, it's still very early on in this race. Anything can happen, but Pierre Gas no, oh, excuse me, Pierre Gasly um, for Alpine, he's had a bit of a tricky start as well. Um, didn't have a great qualifying. Um, also, Alcon had a great qualifying as well, but it was doing a nice little flyby of the field. You can see Nick DeFries is losing a lot of time as well, uh, same as Oscar Piastri, but on lap 5 now. The pace is not that bad. It's not too bad, but again, anything could change though, because again, it's still very early on, because I don't know how much the tires will drop off later into this stint, but the car doesn't feel that bad, but it is. it just feels like a boat in the corners though. I mean, it's just so, it's, it's disgusting. How slow the car is basically in the corners and barring being a lot more like a low downforce quite set up it's not I mean it's mainly I mean I think of barring as like a low downforce I don't really think you have to run like too high of wing but again I mean people have all different setups but again the car does not feel that bad uh, through some corners but it's just a lot of the fast corners the car is just horrible mainly through high speed but we're finding Gasly here we're gonna go down the inside on Gasly and we're gonna get that move done another snap there once again and that is not what you want because, again, you're going to lose time. And we've lost three seconds already to all kind of launch draw. I think straw is an issue. Um, he's gotten passed by Lando Norris. And Fernando Alonso actually did get past him as well. Alonso running his own pace as well. I expected Aston Martin to be closer up to the grid, but I guess not. So uh, I guess it was kind of the same thing as we did experience in the uh, my team in our first race for my team. But still the challenge continues on, and we're still going to fight on as we approach now lap seven of this race. Um... So far, the tires are not. The tires are really screaming in pain right now. They are not happy. But Gasly, there's no point in letting fighting Gasly. He's just gonna. We're just gonna lose a lot more time. We're not really into the points. I don't expect us to score points on race one, um, mainly because again, I mean the car isn't where I want it to be. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll sit behind Gasly, and we'll just basically lift the coast a little bit. The fuel consumption though, it's not bad. Um, again, just lifting a coasting will just kind of just help the tires get a little bit of a breathing room. And also just kind of cool down the brakes a little bit. And just see how the car runs in the dirty air as well. And again, through high speed, I'm just really struggling through those center S's. And I don't know why, but it's just, I cannot get the car rotated through there. Everything, everywhere else around the track, I can get the car rotated. Uh, it's just around that thing. And I try not to use as much of that exit curb, but again, 
I still use a lot of the Exocur, but Alex Albon, though, he's got those soft tires are. He's uh, Alex is flying, so I'm not even gonna bother. I might still fight this back though. I mean, I don't know yet. Whereas, uh, no, I'm not gonna fight this back. Albon's gonna clear us here. What's going? We might stay behind him though. See if we get some more DRS. Um, that Williams got the Williams is kind of our race. I expect us to be racing a lot with the Williams, the Alf, the uh, not the Alfa Romeo, the Haas, and probably that's it. Maybe the Alfa Tari as well. Maybe Yuki Sonoda though. I mean. Nick DeFreeze is... I'm waiting for the Nick DeFreeze update for him to be sacked and whenever DR comes back to the game. But um, I expect us to be racing with those two guys mainly through the season. Uh, when we get more updates under the car, though, I don't know where we could be. Hopefully we could challenge the likes of Alpine and I don't think we're going to be fighting Aston Martin. Maybe Alpine. Who knows? But that that's the future. we got to focus on race one right now. And race one is going pretty well on our side. Um, the car doesn't feel too bad right now but i mean it's just mainly i got a good front end i really have a good front end it's just the rear end though that is kind of screaming a little bit in pain but um if i can get good rotation through some of the corners then i can stay with Al albon's pace and we're staying with alex pretty well uh valtteri's bloody quick um and again just another that was just a horrible rotation by me i mean the car would not rotate whatsoever but we're not dumping a lot of overtake though compared to what mainly the other ai are doing but valtteri's got Valtteri's got a lot more pace than me. Um, this guy, the guy is crazily fast right now. And honestly, I'm thinking about letting, I mean, I could let him go. But again, I mean, I want to get kind of race one under my belt. And I would like to finish ahead of Valtteri because I'm cocky. Um, <laughs> I want to be cocky. But um, we do have to keep our expectations high, though. And uh, we do know that uh, we're not going to be challenging into the points. And we're nowhere. And we know that right now in race one that we're possibly going to get overtaken by a lot of the field because again we're still learning the car and i'm still learning basically everything about this car because again i mean it's not when you do jump into different race cars and it, it feels weird when you jump in from like a my team car and then you jump into like the the most worst car in the grid and you can just feel on how crappy it is but um albon came into the pits though he's gonna he came into the pits he's gonna look like i think he's pitting for the medium tires so he's gonna stay out there we're coming we're told we've been told to box this lap and we're going to box this lap we're going to basically respond and i believe one of the Haas is also coming in as well that could be kevin magnuson or nico hulkenberg that is kevin magnuson i believe so we're going to come to the pits now we're going to pit for the hard tire um as well k mag i'm pretty sure he was going to be he's going to be pinning for the hard tires uh let's think logan sard is going into the medium so logan is doing a different strategy compared to everyone else so i don't know how much logan's pace will be but um we do get ahead of the Haas driver, but again, it's just to see, if, do we get ahead of Alex Albon, though, on the exit? Albon had an, an enormous, a pretty quick lap as well. As There is a yellow flag, though, and you actually will not see it, but Pierre Gasly actually did retire from this race. Um, he had a, uh, he wasn't in the points or anything. He just had a uh, severe engine issue. Uh, engine went up into smoke. So, uh, yeah, there was really no point in showing that, but Gasly is out of the Grand Prix, so we do have 19 runners now left in this Grand Prix, but... Uh, Again, on the hard tires, though, what can we do on the hards? We can probably push maybe a little bit, but I don't want to push too much because, again, the tire drop-off, it's pretty rapid. But we're going to get ahead of Baltas, and we're going to get ahead of our teammate. We're also going to get ahead of everyone else as well, which is Yuki Sonoda. And I believe as well we also got ahead of, I believe, Nico Hulkenberg. I think Hulkenberg also put it as well. But it is basically a fight for, basically, it's basically a fight between four Four, four crappy cars between the Alfa, the Alfa Romeo, the Haas, the Alfa Tari, and you can probably, probably put the Williams in there as well, but Williams doesn't really have that bad of a car. It's mainly just Logan Sarge being a rookie and seeing where his pace is, but very early on. On lap 15 now of this race, Nick DeFries comes into the pits. Uh, Nick is absolutely nowhere in this race, and I don't expect him to be really much anywhere through the season, but again, we're under pressure here from Kevin Magnuson. Magnuson's got DRS. That Haas is pretty quick in the straight line. Magnuson's going to go down the inside. We're going to give him enough space. We're going to think about an old switcheroo here. We're going to kind of come offline just a little bit, but we don't want to get off too offline because, again, the marbles will affect us a lot. But anyways, we're going to retaliate retaliate on Kevin Magnuson. We're going to dummy him a little bit. We're going to go around the outside of Magnuson. Magnuson gives us just enough space. We go out a little bit too wide, a little bit marbles on the tires, but we're going to get ahead around the outside. What a move up the P12 now, back into where we were originally in this race. And... We keep pushing on, and we'll see what else we can do on lap 16 now of this race. And Kevin Magnuson will have another dosage of DRS. And also Valtteri Bottas will also have another dosage of DRS. And again, 
If you are sitting back behind another driver with DRS, you can get a rocket ship. And I feel like Valtteri will get into this effect because I feel like he might have a little bit of a rocket ship. But I don't know if he's under threat from Nico Hulkenberg. He's not under threat. We're going to defend from Kevin Magnussen, though. Magnussen around the outside. Uh, he's got so he's pretty late on the brakes. And we get a horrible exit. And we hit, hit the curb, which you do not want to touch an inside curb. And we're sliding all over the track. All over the track, we're sliding. And Valtteri's going to get around down on the inside. I might let Valtteri go here. I might fight this back. We'll see what happens if we go down to turn number three. Around the outside, we go out a little bit too wide. And that's basically just us being... We did a Valtteri Botas type defend. And uh, we let Botas go around us. So Valtteri is going to get ahead of... We lost two positions in one lap. Which is not great, but... It's alright. Now we can sit back and basically just watch our own pace. And just see where we do stand. But as we now approach, we have ten laps remaining left in the Bahrain Grand Prix. And the lights are slowly coming... It's slowly becoming darker out on the racetrack so the track temp will cool down just a little bit and the times will probably ramp up maybe just a little bit but again it is too early no, not too early but it is just good to see what happens but Botas is fighting Kevin Magnuson I expect Valtteri maybe to get past here I feel like we have a much faster car than the Haas maybe a little bit because again the Haas's tires they do fall off a lot but I don't know if again I mean I don't know how much the Haas has uh, tire upgrades so we'll have to see what happens but I thought about a move on Kevin we're gonna let Kevin go and we're going to basically defend from Hulkenberg. Oscar Piastri, though, he's kind of back here in this train as well. Oscar's probably going to get a little bit annoyed because he's sitting back here and he sees Lando Norris already up there in about P8 in this race. So McLaren's absolutely flying. I think I, I'm we're, we're not, McLaren is going to probably be up there in the front of the grid like they were. And they should be because McLaren are quick. And we're going to go down the inside of Magnuson. We had just DRS. Magnuson really couldn't defend much. And we're going to get ahead, and now we chase after Valtteri. Uh, I don't really chase after, more just sit back, let Valtteri go. I want to see how what he can do and see if he can catch up to the Williams of uh, Albon, because I know right now we can't catch up to uh, Albon. I mean, our pace is just not... My race pace isn't good compared to Valtteri. His race pace is pretty strong, but again, we're sliding all over the track. We get another huge slide there once again. Got into the marbles a little bit, and that kind of affected us, though, as Magnussen's going to get ahead... As we head down to the more tricky part of the track. And again, the rear tires are falling off a little bit. And we're going to... And the way we know we spin around. We do a spin. We get back on the track once again. The tires are... Oh, man. That was a... Oh, that... Oh, man. I don't know what happened there. We'll have to take a look. I think I lost the rear end a little bit. And, yeah, I did. I lost the rear end through that corner. And the tires were just... Oh, the tires were just screaming in pain. The rears are so hot right now. Um, They were just... The rears were fighting for their life, and I also touched the inside curb as well. So we've gone around already on the on our opening race on debut, and that is not what you want to see from us. And that is a bit of a tricky challenge. And basically, the rest of the race, we were nowhere. The tires were dead. The tires were overheating and everything like that, and we had to basically just we couldn't really do much. And I just wanted to see how much more I could push of the car. And again, look at the rears, 51% the 50 and the fronts are not as bad as the rears but I mean again I mean the car feels really good in the front end it's just the rear end now I'm really struggling with and I'm not ha happy with the balance at all either um, as well we didn't we did a little we didn't do a front wing change um, we didn't change anything on the downforce so we just kept the car just the same a little bit but again there's another snap there once again that's just the struggle I'm facing right now and we're under threat from Nick DeFries I don't know why I'm saying that because Nick DeFries is Oh god, I mean, I can't believe we're going to probably get passed by Nick DeFreeze here, but, I mean, I'm just saying the truth, I mean, this is quite not what we want in race one, we don't want to be fighting backmarkers, and we are a backmarker, but we don't want to be fighting Nick DeFreeze for the last, the last of the runners here, and we are in four seconds off from uh, Logan Sargent, so... I guess, uh, I mean, we're running with the rookies, uh, that's for sure, we are running with uh, the rookies, but... It is not what you want to see on debut, but Max Verstappen, though, he's now approaching the last lap of the Grand Prix, and Verstappen is going to win the Grand Prix. He's going to be comfortably ahead of Sergio Perez and Carlos Sainz. GG's to him, and we're under threat from Nick DeFries here, and again, we get, a, we get a, another snap here once again. And again, we're under pressure from Nick, though, but we should get ahead of Nick. Do we get ahead of him? Yes, we do. That's P18 on the grid. I learned a lot in race one. I really did, but this car... Uh, we got to find some improvements as we head into Saudi Arabia.
magnificent race and a drive right out of the top draw to take the win for Red Bull today. Anthony Davidson, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? I really feel the track layout combined with the track temperatures we saw today suited their car. These cars come alive when the tyres are just at the right temperature, and the driver did a great job managing that as well. They just look so comfortable out there. It's like anything, it always looks so easy when it all just clicks. Red Bull are our winners today after showcasing some incredible driving. There's been a huge push from them lately to stay competitive with the other teams, and they're certainly proving themselves. There you go, Masters Happen wins the Bahrain Grand Prix, and... Uh... Beat Sergio Perez and also Carlos Sainz gets up there for the podium. So, as it was in the real life season, uh, Red Bull are flying, and I expect them to be flying in the first couple of races. So, um, yeah, good to see Red Bull win. Good to see Max win. Well, I guess everyone hates seeing, watching Max win every weekend, but as a Max fan, I mean, it it gets annoying after a little bit. But at the same time, you again, maybe someone will close the gap to Red Bull in real life, but. Fortunately, on our side of the race, um, it was a bit of it was a bit of a tricky one um, through the mainly the second half when we got to the hard tires. Um, that it's, the balance wasn't right. The tires were screaming in pain. The tires were overheating a little bit, and um, yeah, so as well. But Valtteri though, he gets P12. Uh, but he wasn't far off though from Albon. He actually gained, uh, actually caught up to Albon quite a lot, and um, that's pretty good from us. But again, uh, two Americans finished 17th and 18th, so that's not ideal. But um, Still, very early on in the season, I learned a lot on race one. Learned a lot, and uh, it's always good to learn a lot on race when you, when you drive a new different car completely. So yeah, that's for sure. But checking out the driver standings here, not the driver standings, the uh, mainly just the lap times. Uh, looking at Valtteri's lap times, he's about setting 136 on the mediums, and uh, the hard tires. Like Valtteri was absolutely flying, and we'll see on what our lap times are. But I mean, 134s. And the tires again fell off for Valtteri. He got into the 135s. Um, not Logan Sargent our times, and, uh, we're running, yeah, we're, oh, wow, we're lacking a lot of pace, we're losing about a couple tenths to Valtteri, it looks like, but, uh, we were, like, the 135s, 136, so, yeah, we're about, we're quite a little bit off from Valtteri in race one, um, looking at data, but, again, I mean, it was just a learning curve from everyone, and, uh, taking out the driver standings, we said P18, zero points on the board, uh, kind of expected, and also, uh, Eight points on the board, or not eight? <laughs> we sit P8 on the board ahead of ahead of ha uh, Haas and uh, also Alfatari. But that's it for race one. Learned a lot, and uh, the start of my team starts off right now. And uh, yeah, learned a lot, and um, we'll definitely push on for Saudi Arabia. But thank you all for watching this video. Um, kept it short and simple, not too short. Good, good, good 33-minute video. But hope you all enjoyed this video. Have a good rest of your day off. If you want to see more videos, go check out my channel down below. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Have, have a good rest of your day, y'all, and stay safe out there. Peace.